There you go, we're just uh, far up the PSA, getting ready for a bit of practice later. So we'll pop into the workshop, see what's happening. So here you go, another day in paradise. What's been happening recently, so we've got a lot of stuff happening. Uh, concentrate, MZ125, Osaka Sherpa, Zender, Cotton, My Aerial, New Hudson, OK Supreme and area. So we're on lockdown, but Miller isn't on lockdown, so he's got a lot to do. Anyway, what have we got here? Well, this is the OK Supreme 1938. Um, this is where we have got to at present. So the great thinkers would have a lot to think about, and the doers would have a lot to do. So Robin's doing the paint paintwork, this is wet spray, uh, those are in primer, those black bits have been powder coated so they're all up to speed, um, the seat's been recovered, that's a nice job from Leighton's, that was the primary case that Terry Hall made for us so that's all painted ready to go together, um, wheels ready, tires ready, engine ready, Jim's doing the gearbox, he's working at home with this lockdown business. Here we've got the, the chrome stuff back from um, John. Um, all nice stuff, those are the exhaust rings, all nice. Uh, exhaust pipe, um, silencer, handlebars. So, and of course, your early homework will help when you're putting this together. You can get all these bits here, and you don't know what they are, so. You remember Miller said, two dots is right hand side. So you don't have to worry whether that goes that way or that way. Right hand side, two dots. And on there, you'll see bottom written there. So that's on the bottom of the mud guard and that's the top of the mud guard. But what else have we got? We've got the brake shoes back relined. They put quite heavy lining on them. So we'll have to assemble all those up on the brake plates. Um, put them on the lathe and machine them to the correct OD for the hubs which are here. Uh, the actual hubs are in quite good nick. Um, we've got all those, you see the liner there is all nice. So that will be a good, all nice, no, cleaned out nicely. Stainless steel spokes, good quality rims. Uh, all up to speed, we'll put new bearings in them, new tyres, um, so the sprocket will go onto that one, <clears throat> we'll get the sprocket on there, new bearings in here, so uh, nicely lined, um, so we're all up, pretty well up to speed, so when Miller will have to get into that, get it together, but Really, I should think of a good a couple of days uninterrupted, un, uninterrupted. Not too many phone calls, not too many interviews and stuff. Um, get it cracked on for your next visit. So move on here, uh, New Hudson. It's coming on quite well. Um, exhaust all nicely nickel plated. You remember. Nickel up to 1930, there onwards it's chrome. Check the engine out, carburetors all up together. This aluminium case has come on very well, so almost ready for the far up. Um, gearbox is all nicely together if you go around that side. <coughs> um, Pilgrim oil pump, that's a nice badger, that's a nice touch. We've got, we managed to solve that and New Hudson on here, it's always nice to have names and on the top of the gearbox you've got all the writing telling you what oils to use in the gearbox Cotton's pretty well up to speed we're going to make a throttle, I'll show you how to make um, front brake cable up, we spoke last time um, obviously it's no point in going down to Halfords for 1933 cotton cables so we make them up what really happens is that um, 
it is possible to buy cable kits. There's a bit of a story here. Um, universal clutch front brake cable kit, Van Hill. Goes back a few years this, so if you look at Miller's mail order catalogue um, about 25 years ago, um, you look at these are some of the parts that we used to manufacture and make. Mint mind blowing when I look back that we used to progress, make, divine, develop jigs, mail order, hundreds of bits for trials bikes and so forth but if you look there throttle cables do it yourself universal clutch front brake cable kits available from yours truly and believe it or not what a van Hills part number Sam 1 100 so that's SM um, first thought about universal throttle cable. So here we go, what do you get in a universal throttle cable? Well, you get a whole bundle of bits like this. That's all your unions and stuff. So you wouldn't believe the combination of um, nipples you can get, so that's a nice backup if you need um, any cables. Also, it says here, nylon line. What does that mean? Well, nylon line means that down in there, that's a bit of lining there, nylon line. So that goes down in there like that. And then you put the, the wire through the outside. And that means it's very smooth operating. So if you get an old cable like that there, and you wind it around there, it's devil's own job because it's steel against steel so when you put that there you wrap that round like that and it's as smooth as silk makes the clutch operation front brakes much better right here we go it's inserted inverted levers they work that way pain in the butt because you've got to start feeding all this stuff down through here so first of all we'll get the length of the um, outer cable on the top here so don't forget this here doesn't come all the way down it stops there right so that's where the outer cable stops in here so it's going to end up against that right we're going to thread that through there Let's see how it works so we want to get it nicely into that adjuster <coughs> that goes up and down and that stays solid so you need to calculate that looks about right there because that's going to come up so we'll cut that off there right so that's going to go in there like that right so that looks quite sensible nice cable around like that but what you have to do now is when you cut that off there you've got to make sure there's nothing sticking out so And then just double check it it's free in there so that's nice and free for the cable to come through so while we're doing this here I better put the solder guard on because you don't want to be waiting for that to warm up got that ready we'll get this ready too you leave that there Baker's soldering fluid that's like a flux so we need to have that ready. There's two tins there. And that's the, so the, solder, the solder. So we've got that ready, got that ready. Solder and iron coming on. Um, so we'll have a look at this job here. Right, obviously a bit on the long side, but it's better to be long than short. So, right, we'll feed that through there. Like that. To that nipple sits nicely in there like that so put that on there like this so that feeds through nicely like that 
and then we can feed this through here the adjuster right pop that through there like that we can bring that round nicely like that make sure it fits in there we can stick that there because that's going to go through here but at this stage of the operation we don't want it to go through there so well I've been through our box and um, that's the size of nipple we need for this so the little trunnion goes through here like that and that goes through there and the nipple goes through here that's so <clears throat> When that all goes together like nicely like that, that's what it should end up like. If we put a mark on there, always make sure to keep the felt away a bit from the action area because it can contaminate the solder. So if I cut that off there, like that, spread it a bit so that the nipple don't float about, chop that off there. There you go. Your baker soldered fluid, right? This is your flux, so we're going to stick that in there. Get it nicely. Um, you've got a drop on the end there, so that's what you need. We'll stick the solder on in here too. Get a bit of flux on there. That's back on there. I always put that back on again because that's acid. Doesn't do you any good if you get it on your hands, so. Here we go, we're going to try and get a bit of um, Just run a bit of solder down through here There we go, that's gone down nicely So then we'll get, uh, get some on the uh, top side So get a bit of solder on there Soldering iron is not quite hot enough but it's coming Sometimes it's better to put it on the vise, but um, I've decided in this demo we'll just do it here. You just do it, tap that, that sort of spreads the wire and the solder neatly like that. And then we'll just give it a dress off. We've got a nice job there, we'll just swage that over a bit so I'll put a um, spot more solder on there just to tidy it up a bit. There you go, that's a nice job there. 10 out of 10 miller. Just give it a touch up with a file. That's so we just cool it off here. Bit of water. Right, see if we've screwed it up or not. So, Right, so we've fed the uh, cable through here. So we'll feed it through the um, this end here. So that goes in there like that. that nipple pops in through there like that then we push that back into there so then we take that through to there that goes through to there like that you've got that through there nicely so theoretically this should be the right length if you haven't screwed it up just a little bit of adjustment here so there you go front brake cable all lined up you're nicely in the middle of the adjustment there so you've got a bit of play either way uh, what we have to do here um, later when we get grips <clears throat> it's a bit of a fiddly old thing to do but <clears throat> you've got a in the top here you've got a um, just get a little hammer um, Got to line that up. In the top here, if you have a look in the top, there's a little screw that's got to go in there, in here, and then you pull that back down there again like that. So, got to wait for the grip to come on that. So, leave that for the moment. That that's a standard cable, not nylon lined. You see how sweet that is, nylon lined. So, that's a bit of surplus left over. We can keep that because that could probably do for a shorter cable valve lifter or something so put that back in there 
As we were looking, little hammers, very important when you're working on items. Um, that's a nice little hammer there, metalwork hammer. What's that pretty useful for? Well, saying you're wanting to knock that dent out of that um, there, your best approach always is to try and mark the top of it here on the inside here. Just see how I've marked that, then you get it on here, but it's best if you put a little bit of cloth on top of the anvil. There we go there, so this little hammer gets through here, neatly like that. But again, I used to have one here that isn't actually a hammer, but it's very, very useful. Yeah, that's it track rod end and you see how you get more more movement there of it so you can keep gently doing always work gently and then you can slowly get the dent out see it's coming out quite nicely there and that one there again if you were using that you should maybe use that hammer on the inside like that so lovely hammer that one there, ladies, have a think about this. Friend gave me that as a Christmas present many years ago, and that's one of the best Christmas presents I've ever had. Beautiful little hammer, a little copper mallet, lovely balance. Lots of hammers are poor balance. Um, that old thing there is bad balance, but um, so if you want to buy my Christmas present, put that on your shopping list. And ladies, you'll score a few brownie points because that's a lovely little hammer. You generally use that on light stuff if you're tapping um, aluminium or something, just, just uh, ease it off. Um, lump hammer, why is it a lump hammer? Because it's a big lump and that's to give, give it a bit of welly. Uh, that one there, another big job, Thor. Must be from Sweden or somewhere, you know. Copper hide again for giving something a bit of persuasion. What's that one? Claw hammer. That's for dragging stuff out. When you put it on like on there, you can drag that out there. Claw hammer. Um, quite nice balance. What else have we got? Oh, that one there. That's a um, little wooden job, which is very useful if you're uh, saying you're wanting to do a bit of um, metal work and you just sort of. How it, it shapes the stuff up and when you're hammering actually if you try to draw the hammer you get a better finish you see how I'm trying to come pull the metal that way when I'm hammering it so that helps the job along and then you get a lovely finish like that and uh, you can straighten up a bit there if you wish like that wooden so you don't put big dents in your um, metal work what else have we got in here? That one there is when you're welding and you want to ch chip off the weld, flux off the weld, so that's what that's used for. Another little, nice little dome hammer, a little sheet metal work hammer uh, for peening stuff over. That's just a straight copper, copper job. That's as old as the hills, that thing. So there you go. So. Pretty well there, nice throttle cable, I'm pleased about that, see how nice and nicely it works. Actually we're not that far from startup, so I wonder I've checked the valve timing, I've checked the ignition timing. Um, so I think we'll have a crack at starting it up. Yeah I've got an oil tank on it, but that might be an oil tank there. So. If I stick that on here, a bit of pipe, that'll give us a little bit of fuel into the oil pump. Just give it a bit of a prime up there. A spot of oil in there, that's just a little oil reserve. And that'll keep us going until we get it, um, see if the oil pump works. Uh, fuel. We're not going to put the petrol tank on because it's... Um, <coughs> We can do this. I oh, hope health and safety are not watching. Bit of fuel in here. Flooded up. 
to see if that should be enough to get her cracked up. The usual bit of easy start. I don't know how lucky we're going to be at starting. Right Jan, top man on kickstart. Miller ain't got the strength any longer. He used to kick like a mule but not any longer. Just try it now Jan. Anyway, there you go. Started up, Jan stopped it, but um, all signs good, motor signs good, Miller's done another good job. Happy with all the valve timing, so started quite easy really after a rebuild, didn't it? But um, so now we can finish it off. We're got, waiting for the tank to come back and the primary cover it's been painted to. Uh, we've got all the wheels in, we've done the front brake cable. Um, then it's down to Jim wiring, Miller hates wiring, so we don't do it, and uh, Jim's good on carburation, so when we start it up, probably your next visit, we'll have it outside, give it a run around the block, get a bit of heat in the engine, and uh, check out the carburation. Pleased to say the oil's been coming through here, so that little tank, you can see where it's gone down, and um, the oil pump's working quite nicely. It's run it through there, the Pilgrim pump, total loss system, so it means that when the oil goes into the engine, it don't return, it gets burned and um, uh, not a very a bit of an antiquated oiling system, but not like uh, modern bikes where they circulate the oil very, very, very uh, rapidly, you know, the oil keeps the engine cool, keeps the engine lubricated. I could never understand in Speedway, you get Jap Speedway engines and you get all the world champions shipping on the starting line, revving these things about two and three thousand RPM a minute. And direct loss oiling systems where you get a drop of oil every 30 seconds or something. And this engine's revving at eight, four thousand RPM flat out with a little spot of oil going in. I used to cringe, you know. Whereas my NSU Sport Max, when uh, we were racing it, um, the works used to test the, the oil pumps and it, they actually pumped 22 gallons of oil per hour circulating. So that was some turnover of oil. So it kept the engine cool and um, well lubricated. There we go, another day in paradise, uh, onward and forward, you've got a bit of work to do this week Miller, you've got that OK Supreme to put together, stuck for grips for the um, New Hudson's, stuck for the grips for these here, so, but anyway, happy, happy it runs, another good result, so onward and forward.